everybody, it's Michael here with another video on 3D printing. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Prometheus All Metal Hot End, which is a new hot end designed by a company called Distech Automation, which is run by a fellow named Eric who goes by RP Iron Man on the forums. I also want to send a special thank you to my friend Andrew over at Liber3D.com for helping put this review together. So I've got the Prometheus All Metal Hot End installed on my uh, Maker Farm uh, Prusa i3V. And if you've used all metal hot ends before, you can see that uh, really the basic morphology of the hot end is pretty much similar to what we've seen before. Over here we have uh, constantly on active cooling. Uh, this is a 25 millimeter fan, and as you can see, this is actually bolted directly to the machined aluminum heat sink. Now I really like that design. This actually reduces a lot of the noise and rattle that we might have seen on other all metal hot ends that use a either a printed ABS or an injection molded. Um, interface piece to hold the fan onto the heatsink. This one is directly bolted to it, which gives us a nice solid connection and it's very quiet. Moving on down, we see a pretty traditional looking uh, transition zone. And there is that nut right there, and I'll explain that in just a little bit. That actually turns out to be a pretty important part of the Prometheus design. Uh, moving down, we have a uh, standard looking heat block right here. We do have a uh, kind of a neat little design feature. The thermistor is actually held in with a screw. Uh, which, uh, and if you've seen some of my previous videos, I did one on securing a thermistor into a hot end using muffler putty or thermal paste or something of that sort. This right here, I think, is a very elegant solution. You've got a screw right in there, so if you do need to uh, remove the thermistor to service it for whatever reason, you just take the screw out and it pops right out. Uh, this hot end also is heated with a resistor, which is a little different than what we've seen recently in most all metal hot ends, which have a uh, heater cartridge. This one does use the resistor. It works the same, it just makes it a little bit different when you go to assemble it. And moving on down, what we see here is a, you notice there is also a nut uh, that is attached to the bottom of the nozzle. And then we have the uh, very bottom of the nozzle where we have a 0.4 millimeter orifice. So those are the basic morphological features of the Prometheus all metal hot end. Okay, so that's some of the basic stuff that you can see just by looking at the Prometheus uh, hot end. Now there's a the two major features that I think really set this hot end apart are ones that aren't quite so apparent just by looking at it. The first one I want to talk about is the uh, nozzle design. Now this nozzle right here from top to bottom is actually a single piece of hollowed out threaded rod that has been polished on the inside and drilled out at the end for a 0.4 millimeter orifice. Now what does the single piece nozzle do for you? Well in a traditional hot end design there's actually two parts of the nozzle and they usually join right inside the heater block right here. You'll have a nozzle that screws into the bottom and then you'll have a top half that screws into the top and they meet and ideally they meet in a very tight joint. Now in the best case there's still going to be a little bit of a seam there and in the worst case that joint can actually separate a little bit and I've never personally seen this but I've heard lots of reports of people with different kinds of hot ends having uh, molten filament actually leak out through that joint and that creates a big mess in the best case scenario and in the worst case it certainly ruins your print. In any case that's not something that anybody wants. So the solution to that that uh, Distech Automation has put in here is to use a single piece internally polished nozzle. So there is no joint, so there can no possibility of leaking unless you actually blow a hole in the side of it, which means the hot end is broken, but that hardly, I've never even heard of that happening. In any case, under normal use, you could expect not to have any leaks. This is a leak-proof hot end design. The uh, second major design feature, and this I just think is really just insanely cool, is, uh, and let me back up a little bit and give you a little bit of uh, hot end 101 in, in terms of how hot ends are designed. This top section right here we would refer to as a cold zone. And as you can see, we've got all our active cooling right here. We've got a fan blowing over a heat sink. So the idea is that through this part of the path through the hot end, the filament is being kept as, as cool as it is when it's wrapped up on the spool. So it's not being heated at all, ideally right here. <clears throat> right below the cold zone, we have what we call a transition zone. And that is right here. And that is where the uh, filament is no longer being cooled, but it's not quite being heated yet. And this is traditionally where uh, hot ends that are trying to print PLA unsuccessfully have most of their problems. Right in here, certain filaments, again, most, uh, uh, most notably PLA, will swell a little bit as heat is applied to it, and it, it gets wider before it actually turns into liquid. So right here, it's, it tends to jam up. Moving along, we get into the hot zone right here, and this is where everything is actually being melted. So the filament is being turned into liquid at this point, and then it's extruded out through the, uh, the nozzle orifice down here. Now, again, 
a uh, early ball metal hot end designs had a real problem, particularly with PLA swelling in the transition zone. So the conventional wisdom has been to make the transition zone as short as possible. And then there are varying advantages to having a different size melt zone right here in the hot zone. Now, what the Prometheus does, which I think is really a fantastically cool design choice, is the uh, heater block right here is actually positioned based on where this nut is right here, and the transition zone is based on where this nut is right here. So both the size of the melt zone and the size of the transition zone are completely configurable by the user. Now, what are the advantages of that? Well, traditionally speaking, the, uh, the conventional wisdom says that, that for a melt zone, if you want to have very accurate prints, but you're going to be a little bit restricted in how quickly you can print, you want a short melt zone. So there's a very short amount of space in which the filament is melted and turned into printable liquid. And that happens right here. Now, if you want to print faster, typically you would try and design a longer melt zone. But of course, if you are printing faster, you're going to have a little bit of a trade-off. So you're going to lose a little bit of your accuracy and resolution. Now, I happen to be uh, a, a 3D print guy who prefers really fine resolution and accuracy over speed. I don't really care how long it takes a print to happen as long as it comes out really well. So for that reason, I have the shortest possible configuration right here on the Prometheus. I've got a, I think this turns out to be a seven millimeter melt zone. I have one nut at the bottom and then I have the heater block right here. Now the kit does come with I believe it's a total of seven of these hex nuts, and two of them are in use right here. So you've got a couple of different uh, options to, uh, to really kind of extend, either, either shorten or extend the transition zone, and if you're using a type of filament that is going to really appreciate that, or you can shorten and extend the melt zone, again, depending on whether or not you want to have very accurate but slow prints, or if you really just want to print quickly and uh, accuracy is not necessarily what you're after. So you've got all this design flexibility right here, which I think is really cool, and this gives you a lot of room to experiment and find out what's going to work really well for you. Now, if you've seen the unboxing video that I did of the Prometheus All Metal Hot End a little while ago, uh, you'll see that that one came out of the box completely assembled, and that is not how the Prometheus is shipped currently. It does come 100% in kit form, and there are some beautiful instructions on how to assemble that kit, and uh, those are on the Distech Automation website, and I will include a link to those instructions in the description to this video. Uh, generally speaking, it is a pretty straightforward kit. It does require just a little bit of soldering, uh, but really not very much. And so if you're, if you're concerned about soldering, as I've always recommended, I really suggest you just go out and learn how to do it in practice. It is so much easier to just know how to solder than it is to try and figure out how to get away with not knowing how to do it. Uh, as I mentioned, it is a complete kit. It does come with uh, more adjustments than you're going to need. It does come with uh, a, a number of those hex nuts in order to set the size of your melt zone and your transition zone, uh, and hopefully more than you're going to need. It does come with uh, with all the parts you need to completely assemble this kit for just about any configuration that you could that you could want. Uh, the one exception being that if you are going to be using this in a Bowden setup, there is one additional little adapter that you're going to need to order, and that is really not a big deal. It's a very low-cost item. Other than that, the uh, configuration for the hot end is identical. So now that we've talked about the design, the building, and all the other stuff about this hot end, I know what you're wondering, which is how does it print? Well, let's take a look at that right now. So now here you see one of my favorite test prints being printed on the, uh, with the Prometheus all metal hot end on a uh, Prusa i3V. And uh, right now we're printing this, uh, this is a brain shape, and we're printing it in glow-in-the-dark PLA. And my best luck has been to print this at about 210 degrees. Now, the interesting part here is that I am printing perimeters and infill at 100 millimeters per second, which is quite a bit faster than I've normally been able to get, uh, with, even with other all-metal hot ends on the, um, uh, on any variant of the Prusa i3. So this to me is a pretty impressive testament right here to just what this hot end is capable of. Also worth noting, as I mentioned, I've actually got this configured in the high quality, low speed configuration with just the one nut on the nozzle, which gives me a seven millimeter hot zone. So this is about as uh, the slowest you can expect this thing to, to perform or it's in the slowest performing configuration, but high detail. And I'm very impressed with, uh, with what I've been able to get so far. Again, 100 millimeters per second, both on uh, perimeters and infill is, is to me pretty impressive. Okay, now while that print is still going, I'll show you a print that I made earlier using the exact same settings. And this is how the brain came out. And uh, as you can see, uh, I really like how that print quality 
came out. There's no signs of uh, oozing. There's no stringers. There's no holes in the surface of the uh, of the part. And I did print this incidentally at 0.1 millimeter layer height. Normally I print at 0.2. Uh, so there is a little bit of thinness right here, and I think that's just uh, uh, you know in my slicing program. Next time I'll just you know add some additional uh, top layers because it is a little bit translucent in spots, but there are no holes, there are no um, you know drips or strings or any of that kind of stuff. I think this is a very good quality print. And I'm really quite happy with it. So generally speaking, I got to say I am really impressed with the print quality that I've been able to get out of the Prometheus. So that's my review of the uh, Prometheus All Metal Hot End. Uh, once again, I'm really impressed with the design. I'm really impressed with the design flexibility. I think this is a very versatile hot end that can uh, work with all kinds of materials. Uh, it is good to go up to about 300 degrees Celsius. So that takes care of any uh, print needs that you may have for uh, PLA, ABS, polycarbonate, Tolman nylon, uh, laywood, uh, just about any other kind of material you can, you can think of that is a sort of standard 3D printing material. Uh, it prints fast, it prints accurately, it's incredibly user configurable, uh, and it's also, and I haven't mentioned this yet, it's not all that expensive. As of today, the uh, cost of the uh, Prometheus All Metal Hot End was right around $75 US, which does put it uh, very competitively in line with other all metal hot ends that are out there on the market. So, the question that I know everybody's going to be asking uh, yes, this is a very nice all metal hot end. Is it for everybody? Well, maybe not because it does have some configurability to it and if you're the type of person that just doesn't want to be overwhelmed by uh, by having to configure all of your gear then maybe it might not be the one you want if you're if you're more of a you know open up the box and put something right in and get working with it however this is a hot end for rep wrap printers and I think that most rep wrap uh, operators are probably going to be into tweaking and 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 kind of messing a little bit with their stuff to try and get the maximum performance out of it. In which case, I think this is a fantastic, fantastic choice for an all-metal hot end. The one other question that I know everybody's going to be asking is, what is the best all-metal hot end currently on the market? And in my humble opinion, so far, based on all the hot ends that I've had the luck to review and to use, I'm going to say right now, this actually is the one that I would put on my personal printer. This is the one I would choose uh, in terms of its overall performance, its flexibility, uh, the ability to get it to do different things, and its price point. I see very, very little serious competition for it. Uh, there are some other all-metal hot ends that have been the previous rulers of the roost, and they are still great. They have not uh, de had a decline in quality, but I think this one right here has really set a new bar for all-metal hot ends. So this one gets my highest recommendation with the simple caveat that you may have to tweak with it a little bit in order to get it exactly where you want it to go. But I just want to say, Eric, also known as RP Iron Man at Distech Automation, you have done a fantastic job right here, and this is going to be my all-metal hot end of choice. So thank you very much for watching. And we will see you next time.